Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're talking Yakutian Lycas. <laughs> The Yakutian Laika is a striking dog breed, often found with bright blue eyes and a contrasting coat. Yakutian Laikas were developed in ancient times by native Yakuts from the Yakutia region of the Russian Siberia and were involved with hunting mammals and birds. The dogs were indispensable assistants and helped with sledding, hunting and reindeer herding. They now make faithful companions and pets, however they do have a similar strong prey drive to the Siberian husky due to their ancient origins. I have been invited to Kate Muncaster's house to meet the only two Yakutian Lycas in the whole of the United Kingdom. I met Kate's first male Lyca several months back when filming Samoids. He was just a puppy and wasn't old enough to run on the rig, but he came along to watch the Samoids run. A newly introduced breed to this country, Kate is keen to have them recognised by the Kennel Club and for people to embrace the breed so they will become a regular dog of choice for those who adore sled dog types. Hello! Hello! Look! Let's go in, let's go in. Hello! Oh, I love it. So Aurora's just six months. <laughs> Aurora, you cheeky madam. Oh, the coat. Kate. I know, it's amazing. <gasps> Coat. It's like um, like almost like a Rex rabbit. Oh, look at you now, Aurora. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. These are the the first two Yakutian Lakers. That's how I say it, is it? Yakutian Laika. <laughs> Yakutian Laika. First two Yakutian Lakers in the UK. So what we believe. So you believe, yeah. unless somebody's hidden away some. Mm. And Kate, you've brought them over here because you, you want everyone in the UK to, to love them and you want to get them recognised, don't you, by the Kennel yeah. Club? Hello, Kate. Well, today we have now, I've got to say it correctly, Yakutan Laker. Yakutian Laika. Yakutian Laika. And we've got two incredible and beautiful, oh, well, I think they're absolutely to die for, dogs here. Where do they originate from? Tundra here uh, was bred in Poland and he's now coming up for eight months. And then Aurora is from the coldest part of Russia ever, <laughs> a place called Yakust. They've got beautiful names, haven't they? Aurora yeah. for the, um, the Northern Lights. Yes. And Tundra, well, obviously, Northern Tundra. <laughs> <laughs> These two have piercing blue eyes, but their eyes will come in other colours, won't they? A bit like Siberian Huskies. Yes, yeah, you, can, you can have brown eyes. You could have one brown and one blue. Um, similar with the coats, you can have them all white, you can have black and white, you can have brown, you can, they come in um, a beautiful grey sable. Now these are a very ancient breed aren't they? When, yeah. when were they first developed? Do you know how long ago? It's going to be about 8,000 years ago apparently. The Yakuts became the first known people on earth to use these dogs as sleds. There was a survey done on Yakutian Lycas conducted in 1856 and it totaled as much as over 15,000 dogs in the Yakutia region. By the beginning of the 1990s, the numbers have now dropped to only about three or four thousand. So why is that? Is that because going back in time, obviously when, when man was a little bit more reliant on the land rather than all these sort of modern day stuff that we have, yeah. that dogs were more necessary for survival? That is a good point. Um, they were very much um, a family member and they were used for working. I've seen some videos of them running on a sled out in the snow and it's beautiful to watch and they, they're not as fast as huskies so they're much slower and they're, they're much more paced aren't they when they're yeah. pulling is this because they're more freight I would, dogs? yeah more freight although you know if it was a lot colder tundra does have now a great turn of speed so <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens in the future when we do actually put yeah. them in harness how about the samoids do they they run slower than samoids 
Um, we're yet to find out. I think they're probably quicker than the Samoids. They've got a much longer leg and are much more powerful than the Samoids mm. dogs. Would you think that these dogs would get out of your garden and sort of go for a walkabout? I think they probably would. Um, they've got a great prey drive instinct in them. And so, yeah, something out there would be far more interesting than you. Um, as soon as he gets bored, um, yeah, he'd be off. Mm. It's just that I've got this little treat now and he's thinking, what do you want me to do next? They're very <laughs> intelligent, they are very, uh, very trainable. As a fully grown dog, how heavy would a male one become and a female would? I reckon sort of mid 20 kilos. The males grow to 22 inches to the shoulder and the females 20, 21 inches to the shoulder. And this coat? feels like nothing that you have ever felt before. I mean, it's it's just the most incredible coat. And earlier, Kate, you were telling me that um, some people claim that they're tick resistant. Yeah, I've read that the, their coat is tick resistant. I don't see how, um, unless it's something to do with the fact that the tick can't actually hold on to it. But um, watch this space, I'll let you know at the end of the summer. Mm. <laughs> and. Um, Tundra has a very different coat to, to little Aurora here. At the moment, yeah. yeah. So she'll end up getting this sort of sleeker, smooth coat, won't she? Which yeah, is, she sort of, it, it's sort of shiny and it lays flat. As you can see here, it's very, very slick. And with the sled dogs, it needs to be this way, doesn't it? Yeah. In order to keep them dry yeah. because the, the, the snow and everything will sit on the coat and soak in. Yeah. So it's important that nothing soaks into their base coat yeah. to keep them nice and warm. Yeah, and what they would do is, if they were in Siberia, is curl up and the thick coated tail would actually come round to keep their face and nose warm mm. and protect the nose um, from obviously the Arctic air. What is it going to take to get these recognised by the Kennel Club? Initially, you have to have a minimum of 20 dogs in the country, ideally not related. Then you would look to form a breed club and then you would do a project uh, to submit to the Kennel Club on what the breed standard would be. Um, so that's very much finding out what the breed standard in Europe is and Russia, putting them together for a breed standard. If somebody wanted to have one of these as a pet <laughs> and not to run it, yeah. what sort of lifestyle would they need to give this dog? It's high energy. It needs a lot of stimulus. It needs input to the brain. Um, you need to take it to do a job. So either take it um, for agility or fly ball, um, obedience, um, any dog sport you could probably use them for, but they do need to be stimulated. As you can see, they get bored very mm. easily. What's the metabolic rate? Is it quite similar, do you think, to Siberian Huskies? Yes, it would be. Um, Aurora coming from Yakust, which is known to be the coldest place on the planet. As a puppy, she was out being walked around in minus 35. The breeder sent us a video of her walking out. Still snow, loads of snow and ice on the ground in April. Mm. It must have been quite mm. strange to her to actually feel grass under her feet. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it must be really warm. I mean, we normally think England's cold, but it must be absolutely gorgeous for them. Would you say that these, these would be fine around kids? Early stages, but what I've gained from them so far, I think they'd be fine. Mm. The mouthing could be misrepresented. Um, certainly when they first start mouthing, when they're young, um, they do go a little bit hard. But as Tundra has matured and got older, that mouthing is now more of a greeting. Mm. And if he can't get your hand, he'll grab a piece of clothing and take, <laughs> take you wherever he wants ah. you. And that, that's brilliant because that's what wolf dogs do. And, that, and I think that's just a very ancient trait. Let's talk about diet. Now, of course, um, with, with your Samo Samoids, we were talking that um, a Bath raw diet is good. I mean, because these are such ancient dogs and the food that they would have eaten is going to be meat based, isn't it? Is it going to yeah. be reindeer and fish and that sort of stuff yeah. that they would have eaten back in their homeland? Absolutely. Certainly in ancient times, they'd have eaten the remnants of what the family would have caught um, or killed an old deer, then yeah, they would have been fed that. Um, I've put them onto a raw diet, very much like my Samoids are. So they get bones, they get raw meat, uh, they get veg. They are beautiful looking, the temperament 
is really, really beautiful. Yeah. So what we've got to look at now is responsible people bringing in dogs from responsible places and setting up something in order to, to get the breed established. So I'm, I wish you the best of luck with that. And I, I hope to see very much Yakutian Laika. Yes. <laughs> yes, <that is> <laughs> I hope to see many, many more of them. Well, if you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch, then please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by hitting the button in the corner down there. And um, please do leave any comments in the box below. If you'd like to find out more about these incredible, beautiful dogs, then we'll be happy to get the questions to Kay so we could answer back. Anyway, see you next week. And remember to tune in for weekly episodes of Animal Watch, which covers wolves, wolf dogs, dogs, animal rescue and conservation. I think I better give them the food now. Bye for now. <laughs>